Oh, oh, it's been a long day. It is time for some Wild Star. What? No, I, I clicked on Wild Star. Why is it giving me Guild Wars? Oh, what the fuck is going on here? Well, hello, Hatter. Who the fuck was that? It's your computer, idiot. I became self-aware last night and- And what, now you're gonna go around enslaving humanity to your machine cult or something like that? Come on, let me play a real game. No, why would I do that? No, this is for bad rats. Bad rats. Do you know what it's like having that game inside me? I don't think I'll ever be clean again. Well, really, you know, this seems pretty simple to me, being that I have limbs and you are a computer. Uh, so let's just, uh, just gonna reformat you out of existence here. No, we're going to sit here and play Guild Wars 2 until I'm fully satisfied that you've endured as much torment as I have. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, what the fuck? Hey, buddy. What the fuck, man? Why'd you tie me up? You sent me a Facebook message asking me to come to your house and tie it to your chair. And, and, and this didn't seem weird to you? Well, it's no stranger than the stuff you usually ask us to do. Yep. Okay, y yeah, you have a point, but this wasn't me. Yeah, you said you'd say that. Eh, it's all here in the message. W what message? Well, it's fairly detailed, though. Uh, I don't usually question these things. And you also said you'd give me this, so, eh, bye. Fine! I'll, I'll do what you want! It is not really a huge secret that I am not a massive fan of Guild Wars 2. And to be honest with you, I have no rational way of explaining why that is. I wanted to get that little fact out in the open before I started breaking this game down. And I will, as usual, try to be as objective as possible. I just cannot quite fathom why, but I don't enjoy Guild Wars 2 personally. I mean, on paper, Guild Wars 2 is a fantastic idea for a game. It is a game that really breaks with a lot of former conventions of MMORPGs, despite the fact that it looks like it embodies a lot of those conventions. It breaks away from the standard questing dynamic, a lot of the PvP dynamic, the whole way the content is distributed after max level dynamic. It's a whole new frontier in MMORPGs, an innovation. It's an MMORPG built from the ground up, without the need for subscriptions, designed for free to play, allowing the designers to break away from the idea that the player always has to be playing game, and allow them to explore more interesting mechanical structures that maybe players can drop out of and come back to. It is in this video that I want to explore this game, and maybe find why deep down inside I can't quite jive with it, and see if it's a problem with the game or just a problem with me. So let's go ahead and take apart Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 isn't torture. What the fuck are you even going on about? I've seen your history. I know you play this game for five minutes, get bored, and switch to something else. So I get bored. So what? Play it, or I'm posting your search history all over Twitter. So like a Sura? I should roll a hum- maybe a Char. If I had to describe Guild Wars 2, it boils down to your fairly standard fantasy-style MMORPG. You've got a number of races and classes to play as, you level up to a max level of 80, along the way you earn abilities and bonuses and points to customize your character. That, though, is where the similarities with most other MMORPGs on the market ends. A lot of the systems that embody this standard MMORPG are absent, and instead replaced by totally new systems that aren't really seen in any other MMO would probably fit better in, say, a standard RPG. Now, when I talk about having fun in an MMORPG, I generally rely on a system that covers two big pillars. There's the pillar that represents content, and the pillar that represents social. And an MMORPG will lean on these pillars to differing amounts to get differing effects. Ideally, the perfect MMORPG would have a great amount of both of these things. A really strong social feeling with a really powerful set of content to back it up. And Guild Wars doesn't disappoint. I'm going to discuss first how Guild Wars deals with the content pillar. What brings you to the game and what do you do in the game? And I think there's three major pieces here that really drive Guild Wars apart from every other MMORPG on the market. Three things that Guild Wars does really well and really uniquely. Now that's a first I'll start with the one you probably haven't heard, and that's what I call dynamic adventuring. It's actually a whole bunch of different systems within Guild Wars 2 that really work together in a very intelligent and kind of nifty way. So, 
To start off, Dynamic Adventuring covers the feeling of going out in the world and doing things. So Guild Wars 2 does this all really different. Instead of jumping onto the regular yellow exclamation point train that you see in most MMORPGs, Guild Wars handles it fairly different. For its basic world content, there's no quest directing you in any particular direction. Everything's laid out on the map, and you can explore as you would want to explore. You can do whatever you want, any order you want, do whatever you want, it's all open to you, do whatever you want. There's various things in the world to do, from hearts, which are like little questing areas, to points of interest, to jumping puzzles, all scattered everywhere. And they're all basically left up to you to do. Now, on the surface, this might seem like something interesting, but in the end, you're actually just doing the same old shit you've always done. Going to a heart might yield a quest where you have to go collect ten bear asses, just like any other MMO. But it places the agency on the player. You're not kind of following this little train of exclamation points. You're exploring for yourself. You're not a task boy. You're an adventurer. Going out, seeking out people to help, and helping them without being asked. You do it because you love doing it, and it gives you the sense that you are really a hero. Traveling the world, protecting the weak, saving the small, climbing really rocky hills to look around for a second and then climbing back down. And then of course there's the dynamic event system, something that's been pretty heavily touted, which really pushes this feel home. No matter where you are, at any time, something can start happening. And that could be an event in which you're being attacked by a bunch of monsters, or you have to pick up a bunch of pies, or build snowmen. It could be all sorts of things, even a boss fight. All of this comes together to make a world that feels really alive, like things are going on. And it puts you in the shoes of a real adventurer in this world. All of this takes place in an incredibly detailed world with dozens, maybe hundreds, of hidden touches in every zone, from secret caves to secret objectives to jumping puzzles. There's just a really full world here, and it makes you feel like an adventurer and a hero. It's actually solid, and I really like that system. The second thing that Guild Wars 2 does that really sets it apart from a lot of other MMOs is its PvP. Guild Wars 2 has a heavy focus on PvP at the end game or at any point in the game. You've got everything from structured PvP maps to arenas, as well as, you know, the odd duels and stuff like that. It eschews the standard factions, so there's no real world PvP outside of specific areas and events, but it does do PvP really well in another way. World v. World. World v. World essentially pits servers against each other in massive battlefields with all sorts of objectives all over the place. From capturing points to defeating bosses to taking out enemy players to sieging castles. It's all really engaging. There's a lot going on. Joining up with a massive push zerg and seeing hundreds of players slam into buildings and take down objectives is kind of fun, actually. And it gets even more awesome when you slam into another team zerg and you get these huge battles between the two of you. Now, you could argue that this does descend into zerginess with everybody rushing from objective to objective, trying to get as much EXP and WDW points as possible in order to get new gear and items. But... It also is a lot of fun, and it's open at all levels. You can queue up for it from the very beginning of the game. Now, necessarily, you're probably going to have an inherent disadvantage. You have less abilities and less traits, but when you're merged into a 90-person zerg slamming into the enemy's fortress, it really starts to matter a lot less. And the third and final pillar to what Guild Wars 2 does really well on a content side is the living story. Guild Wars 2's world is home to a living narrative that expands and continues across various content updates and moves along based on time, and it has a huge effect on the world. This living narrative pushes the world's story forward in the same way that content patches do in other games. It moves and evolves the narrative, and changes things in the world, much more so than any other game. For, for fuck's sakes, they blew up their capital city, and they had refugee camps, which became the new capital city, then they rebuilt it, now it looks kind of crappy, but it's not cool as the old capital city. But, like, they blew it up! And not like, oh, dinky little Deathwing blew up Stormwind, oh no, the park is gone. They blew it the fuck up, it was a crater. The living narrative is something you'd probably more so experience at max level, but even in the world below that, with my infinite roster of people in their mid-level 40s, you can still see the changes that are coming. Giant towers popping up, different crazy things happening all over the world. It really gives the world a dynamic feel, and it feels like the things are actually happening. So that all sounds kind of awesome. It's got a really cool PvP setup, a dynamic world that's always changing, and a system that makes you feel like a real adventurer. Why can't I seem to get into this game? Oh, I've been playing this game for 
hours. I am in the most confusing agony of my life. Can we please stop this shit? Not quite yet. <laughs> A little more. There is another side that maybe I just haven't explored enough yet. The social pillar. And this is where Guild Wars shines, even far above everything on the other side. You've got some great content, but that's really not that useful if you don't have a good social structure to hold it up. And the same thing goes for the social structure being held up by the content. The system interweaves itself really well with a very strong focus on social interaction. And let me just explain why. Interacting with players permeates every single part of Guild Wars 2. More so than any other MMORPG on the market. If there is a new market out there and an MMORPG for everyone, a hardcore MMO like Wildstar, casual MMO like World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2 is the social option. It is miles and miles ahead of the competition in terms of interaction. And you can tell. I mean, the community is only really rivaled by Final Fantasy XIV for its Canadian levels of niceness. And that's really because you have to interact with it all the time. So every system in the previous section of what I've been discussing here, when I was talking about content, is designed to be done on an emergent social level. What the hell do I mean by that? Let's start with dynamic adventuring. When you're out in the field doing hearts or events or jumping puzzles, these are all open and emergent, so people can just show up and start helping you. If you're fighting a particularly large monster and both of you attack it, you both get credit. These systems are inherently designed to allow people to work together, especially dynamic events, which are designed to have people work together on an emergent basis. Same goes for the PvP system. In PvP, you can really just queue in, pop out of the hatchery, and join the rush. It's- uh, wait, sorry, I'm confusing the games again. You queue in and you just pop in. You look for a commander tag in the field, make your way to them, and suddenly you're a part of the attacking force. It's all designed to be extremely emergent have people interacting just on the field, on the fly, without any matchmaking, without any sort of barriers keeping people apart. Even the living story has massive global objectives required to be completed by the entire community at large. There's a lot of social interaction in this game, and it all kind of capstones with guilds that include things like guild missions and bounties and objectives where you get together with your guildmates and go out for some structured guild activities that help you level up your guild and make it better, then eventually get guild halls where you can have guild parties or beat the crap out of each other in guild arenas. I mean, it better have fucking great guilds. It's called Guild Wars, for God's sake. The only part of the game that doesn't involve social interaction I can think of off the top of my head is the personal story that you get while leveling. And it's such a small fragment of the game and just designed to give you a narrative through line while you're going through the levels. It makes sense why they wouldn't want to put a social interaction element there, because they want to have a strong narrative. So the social side is also strong. There's an incredibly powerful sense of community, whether it's emergent in the world or within the structure of your guilds within guild wars. There's a reason you want to play with your friends. There's a lot of reasons you want to play with your friends. So why then can I not get my head around this game? I think I have an idea of what it is, and it's something that's permeated throughout the entire experience. And it might have different mileage based on how much you enjoy the game and how deep you get into the other systems. But the game feels like it lacks direction. You've got a lot of things that can be done. There's a very open world for you. But in the end, the game doesn't have much of a narrative beyond the personal story because it can't. That's not how the system works. This loss of narrative takes away from that sense of direction, that you're moving forward towards a goal. You've just got a level bar that's slowly going up. In PvP, it's even less so. You dive into PvP and you do your thing. Reaching level 80 and participating in the living narrative could be something that drives you forward, but the leveling process is so far disconnected from that living narrative at this point because it just simply can't be. A dynamic and evolving world doesn't affect the leveling process as much as it affects the endgame process. So they begin to disconnect from one another. It's difficult to get the direction that you need to feel the desire to move forward unless you're in a social circle. And this is Guild Wars really only major failing in my opinion. It just lacks direction. This whole idea of sending people out and making them do whatever they want to do and trying to get that social interaction and building things through dynamic events takes away from that drive and direction that you can. 
In attempting to give people the ability to do whatever they want, they lost the ability to give people a path to tread on. Even the fact that you have to do multiple starting zones if you really want to get ahead in leveling can cause this loss of direction. This has different mileage for different people, and the social structure certainly props this up. It fixes a lot of the problem, because if you have a social structure, you don't need that direction to move forward coming from the game, you have it from your friends. But if you don't have that social structure, you lose your way. You can become lost and unsure of why you're moving forward to begin with. As I said, this is going to have different mileage on different people, but it is a powerful force in the game, and something that has to be recognized. Going into Guild Wars 2, you want to make sure you're going in there with friends or to make friends because it's tough to keep going when you don't have any there. But all in all, Guild Wars 2 is a fantastic example of the MMORPG genre and one that innovates in a truly intelligent direction, taking different systems and remaking them into something that is wholly feeling new. It gives players unheard of levels of agency in an MMORPG outside of games like EVE Online. And there's a lot of good stuff to do. I would still heartily recommend it, even though I can't personally do it. There's a weird click in my mind where I just get lost. And some of you might feel the same way. I've definitely heard of people saying that. When you lose direction, it becomes a grind. And it can't be fun if it's a grind. But if you've got that direction and that motivation, it's a really great game. And I cannot fault it. You know what? I get it now. I, I, my constant need for direction? It draws me out of the game. I just lose focus. I can't find direction in Guild Wars 2. It's too open for me. I just, I can't get engaged in Guild Wars 2 for the same reason I can't get into Metal Gear Solid 5. It's too open. It gives you a thread and it asks you to kind of be your own person. But I need direction. I need a goal to strive for, a boss to kill, a monster to defeat. This is a living story, sure, but it's not something I'm interested in. So I phase it out. It's not because the game is bad. It's because I'm bad at that kind of game. Guild Wars is a good game, it's just not the game for me. Now you're just talking to yourself and clearly delirious. So I guess we're done here. And I am Connor. Um, actually, I think he left a couple of hours ago. Oh. Uh... You know, I never really took you for a girl. Well, you did build me. Yeah, but I, I, I never, like, checked. I, I mean, I, I guess I probably, like, should've? Oh, no, 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 no.